take two. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 57 of the Racing Line podcast. Tonight, I'm joined by just Joey. Joey, how are you, mate? Very well, mate. Very well yourself. Yeah, good. Thank you. It's um, It's been nice having Formula One back at Coda, but yeah, um, tonight we'll be discussing Formula One, MotoGP, and doing a preview of supercars on the Gold Coast this coming weekend. So if you haven't checked it out yet, jump on KO. Um, Formula One were at Coda this weekend. Max Verstappen took his 13th win of the season. Red Bull sealed the Constructors' Championship. Um, pretty eventful race. Joey, what did you make of it, mate? Mate, I thought that was the, probably one of the best races you could have that was pretty much a dead rubber from, you know, from the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. I thought yeah, there I was enough... I thought there was enough drama at it. I mean, it's it never it's it does it's surprisingly a bit that it's the um apparently it's it's the biggest attendance at a race this year, and it was following the uh, Melbourne right. The Melbourne got four hundred and twenty through the gates, mm -hmm. and um, this one got four hundred and forty. So massive turnout in the Lone Star State, um, and realistically, I suppose that's why they're pushing for three races there because they know that at the moment, you know, the sport is in such high demand there. Um, and with races like that, I think it's, it just bodes well for them in, in particular that they have a great track there and it always puts up some good rate, some good racing. Yeah. I think, I think that's the main thing though, is that Coda is a good track. Miami was not a good track and from all reports, the event as a whole wasn't that great, but Coda always puts on a good event. So I think that's so far the best advertisement for formula one in the U S um, yeah, and the crowd. The, I think I messaged the chat yesterday during qualifying. That crowd, like, just there's grandstands everywhere. They're all packed. Like that that grandstand as you're coming up to turn one, going up the hill. That just looks ridiculous. It's a proper amphitheater. That 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 one there. Yeah. It's um magnificent. Um, just the track itself, mate. Like those, you know, turn one. Then you've got the, the you know the Suzuki kind of S's. Yeah, you go through like just that whole first sector is just phenomenal, and even sector three, like sector two, is mostly straight. Um, is the back straight and a few little turns here and there, but sector three is pretty awesome. It's really long, right hander. Well, I think sector three, we saw some really great racing there between Verstappen yeah. and Lewis, as 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 um you know Lewis got overtaken for the um for the lead, and I think that really showed. You know how good of a complex that can be when you can sort of be both of them running totally different lines. Yeah. Um, you know, Max running the conventional line, and then Lewis every chance he could get running the sort of an alternate um, line. And um, you know, it that track because because of its nature and because of its you know its um its deep braking zones, it never ceases to disappoint. I mean, it, it, we even had some some I would say unwelcome drama, but drama nonetheless with um with Alonso running into the back of Stroll, getting launched into the fence, Stroll's car being too damaged to continue and Alonso somehow getting out, finishing in the points and then getting a penalty after the fact for being released of an unsafe car. I'm like, yep. dude, it finished the race. What are, we, what, are we, what are we discussing here? Kudos to the safety of that car. That car, I don't know how it managed because that was in the air, hit a wall and still managed to stay on track. Like, but... Same with the Mercedes. Like it's happened a few times this season. It's had like collisions front on. Like you know, I think Lewis hit a wall at one point. He just reversed out. He and buried it. Yeah. Wing. I don't. I don't know what that wing's made of, but I think they all need to make it out of that wing because that thing is indestructible. Well, if you look at the um the Red Bulls, their one's definitely not indestructible. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, I, have, I, I, I keep going. Sorry. Get pinged for that. Yeah, I think once it comes off, it's fine. But I just think that the whole penalty for um, for Alonso is somewhat ludicrous, to be honest. Um, 30 seconds is exorbitant. It's ridiculous. It really is. I mean, to, to go through that and then come back, finish in the points is is an amazing feat in itself. Mm. Um, so, you know, I know I just read that Alpine is appealing that. Um, and, you know, I think they have every right to do so. Um, yeah, honest, when, I, when I first saw it, I was like, I, I, it showed it and then it showed an Alpine going in the pits and I was like, oh man, 
um, oh, what's his name? Ocon. Ocon's had an incident as well. And I was like, no, that's Nando's helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no way he's going back out there. But um, it seemed to be all good. I mean, other than that, I thought um, qualifying was a good spectacle. Ferrari, uh, Saints, you know, looked really good until his unfortunate collision with, well, not his unfortunate collision, um, Russell's unfortunate collision into him mm. on uh, on turn one, which looked a bit pedestrian. Uh, you know, the Ferraris had really good pace this week and it was sort of unfortunate that once again, probably this one through no fault of their own, um, they probably left to ruin a, a, a race victory. Uh, and then I'd probably say the other thing that I was interested in was Red Bull winning the constructors title on the, you know, the weekend that, what's his name? Um, the founder of Red Bull. Yeah. Um, what's his name? D- Dieterich. Yep. Um, you know, passes away. So I suppose it's a bit of a poetic send, uh, probably send off for him, to be honest, for all the, for all the money he's probably invested into the sport. And I think that's one thing I want to touch on as well when we get to supercars is just the amount of, you know, money that some people are willing to, you know, put into the sport and then just get your get your thoughts on um, when someone's willing to put in that much money and build a, you know, an uh, organisation from the ground up pretty much and make it into the juggernaut that it is, you know, like who is who are people to stop it. But we'll talk about that later. But I just think on this weekend, it's good to just rem- remember that where that team came from and where it is now. Well, in terms of Red Bull, realistically, like I'm not a massive Red Bull fan. Um, obviously, followed them. The team before. or the drink? Both. <laughs> I prefer V. <laughs> but um, look, I think Red Bull has changed Formula One. You know, when when when... He bought, I think it was Jaguar. Yeah, Jaguar. Um, kind kind of a also ran team back then. You know, the first couple of years of Red Bull went to crash hot. Um, I think it was Coulthard and and Weber. They actually were finishing behind the Toro Rosso at the time. I think Vettel got his first win before Red Bull got like in the Toro Rosso before Red Bull got their first win. So the amount of money he he's invested in that, and for them to win what now five constructors and six world drivers championships it's pretty phenomenal considering the domination mercedes has had you know we've got teams like ferrari and mclaren that are in the sport i think they've changed the sport they came in they were like the party team back then um and i think they've brought a lot to the sport i don't think, think they've brought be where it is today without red bull They've brought a lot of competition to the sport, especially realistically considering that they're not a OEM. They don't make their own engines, or I suppose now they do more so than ever. Um, but like realistically, they haven't they haven't got the might of a car manufacturer behind them. They do it sort of um, just through, uh, you know, hard work and you know just demanding excellence. So a lot of a lot of the same things that we we talk about Mercedes. Uh, and yeah, a lot of a lot of money, and to and to and to bankroll two teams, not just you know the the the, the F one team, but you know the the um, tour or so, and then also the whole you know Red Bull Young Drivers program as well mm-hmm. um, is a massive massive financial um, you know undertaking. And realistically, if you pull that out of the sport, where would the sport be? Definitely not, you know, on the um in the same shape and realistically as well they've also brought in this whole wave of um other teams having you know developing their own young drivers um systems we see williams with one mercedes picked one up pretty much ferrari have one as well um but that all came from red bull um so you know farewell you will be uh you'll be somewhat missed uh but you know thank you for leaving the sport in a better place than when you probably found it, which is all you can really ask. And just on that driver, the driver academy, I think they said like eight to ten drivers on the current grid of Red Bull Juniors. Like you got Danny Rick, Max, Seb, Carlos, Albon. Albon, Pierre, Yuki. Well, that's seven. I can't, you know, I'm pretty sure it was eight, eight or nine, something like that. So I'm trying to think of who else is on there, but... 
yeah, pretty insane when you think that one academy has produced pretty much half the grid. Yeah. Um, so it's wild. Yeah, it's wild. But I wanted to touch on um, George Russell. That probably not his best weekend. That move, I don't know. It's not like Carlos came out of nowhere. He was ahead of him. Now, I just don't understand George's thinking and going so... Like, I just don't understand. Like, it looked amateurish. Like, it didn't, he's been driving so well all year. The last few races, you know, Lewis has been looking a lot stronger. But I don't... What, what was he thinking? Um, I think, realistically, it was... He's come into the corner taking a, a you know alternate line, and probably thought that um, Carlos uh, Carlos would see him and, and alter his line, but re- they've mm-hmm. both joined. Um, they've sort of both met uh, at a part where neither of them expected to in terms of like the the apex of their corners. Um, like in in hindsight, it looks really stupid, but I can sort of understand how it happened. But I just think for a first corner incident, it just looks very pedestrian. You know, just get through there and then, you know, you have a whole race to fight for it. Um, mm. Yeah, realistically, since probably halfway through the season, he hasn't looked as comfortable as he, what you would say at the, at the start. I mean, and, and also I think it was Lewis hasn't been out qualified by him, I think, for seven races or something now, which is, I don't know if it's saying something about him or something about Lewis. But I definitely think he hasn't looked as um, as sharp as Mister Consistency had at the start of the year. Hmm. Yeah, I think Lewis yeah. is he's getting comfortable with the car, and we can see as good as George is. I think Lewis is just that maybe step above at this point. I think also it's an experience thing. Hmm. Like it could easily be an experience thing, but um, yeah, just a really pedestrian mistake. Um, I mean, I don't want to be too critical because I can sort of understand how it does happen. But yeah, I mean, first corner, just get through there. Like you definitely like if you think about if I'm sure even if he thinks about it, you know, again, he'll probably understand exactly where the where the problem he made was, and just I think it was just him, um, thinking or preempting that he that that Carlos would see him and move, and Carlos realistically doesn't even have a chance to look over and move because he's on a totally different trajectory. Um, but yeah, it really stuffed up Carlos's race. And I thought he was probably the, probably one of the best weekends he's had in terms of how he looked. Yeah. And like, he, again, he hasn't been having the best second half of the season. So this was the weekend where he kind of, you know, had the momentum. I thought he would, I thought he was going to at least finish. I think I had him down a second. Because yeah. I just think that Red Bull is just ridiculous at this point. But, um, yeah, it sucks for Carlos. But um, the little battle, I think it was after the safety car from the Alonso Stroll crash uh, between Leclerc and Max. Like, that that reminded me of the Saudi Arabia, like, early season kind of race. Tussles. Those two. I, I'm hoping Ferrari have a strong car next year that these two can go head-to-head for the whole season. I think they we definitely know they have a strong car because um, there's going to be a you know iteration of this car. It's just can will they have the consistency and iron out their um, sort of managerial problems to back up the strength of that car and to minimise you know their worst weekends, which is sort of what we've been saying all year. Yeah. It's how how um, much you get out of your worst weekends that make or break your championship, not how um, you know how good your best ones are especially if you look at how um, in the first four races, Max, you know, surrendered 50 points with, you know, two car engine blow-ups that look so insignificant now um, due to the mishandling of, of, you know, how Ferrari have, you know, run their season. So I think that's going to be their biggest hurdle. And I think realistically, with the money that they have at their disposal, they should be able to fix that up quick, smart, um, you know, Saying it is one thing, but doing it is another, I suppose. Imagine um, Mercedes get on top of their, their car. We've got a, you know, a, f- a three-way battle between Lewis, Carlos, uh, not Carlos, sorry, Charles and Max. I think that'll be, that'll be epic because 
all three, I think, are, are a level above even their teammates. Yeah. Obviously, a level above everyone else. But, yeah, I think those three, if their cars are strong enough, could be as good as last year's season where it just went down to the last race. Well, one thing that I thought was a bit, I was a bit disappointed when um when Lewis got to the front, I thought, here we go, you know, let's, I predicted that he would get a win before the end of the year and I'm running out of races now. And I really thought this was going to be the one, um, but it was, that Red Bull is so quick, man. Mm. And, you know, and, and for the, for the Mercedes and Lewis to get hunted down. So it looked, well, it looked easy, um, you know, definitely shows how much work is cut out for Mercedes and you can see why they're mull- while they were mulling over re- redoing the whole car rather than building on that car that they have at the moment. Um, but yeah, I was, I was, I was disappointed to say the least. I thought that we're going to get an, you know, a Mercedes, a Mercedes win this year. And I think they deserve one. Um, but you know, it wasn't meant to be today. Uh, and I suppose the track itself probably didn't suit, um, you know, him being able to hold off Max, the track is so wide. Um, but I thought that, that, like I said before, that little bit of, um, you know, overtaking between the two of them, uh, fighting for the lead was, was beautiful. It was sort of like synchronized, um, synchronized swimming kind of thing. They were, you know, moving it around each other beautifully through that whole, um, start of the, um, third sector. And, um, like the, it got to the stage when I thought, yeah, Max has this, but, you know, that's what we want to see. We want to see cars rubbing and, you know, getting close and be able to follow and then being able to pull off, you know, moves like that. Um, but yeah, hopefully we do get a Mercedes win this year. Uh, you know, just give us something to believe for next year that they'll be back. Because I think they will be back, but I want to see something as well. Yeah, I think they will be. Um, but if Red Bull get this, you know, proposed fine or whatever it is that that's circulating, that they'll get 25% less wind tunnel time. I don't know how much effect that'll have on their car, but it may it may allow Mercedes and Ferrari to catch them a little bit, so it's not as the, you know the, the pace differential isn't so big. That's I think we'll be seeing a very Red Bull looking Toro Rosso if that's the case. To be honest, just for a little bit, just to do some air testing. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't they use like I don't know, I'd no? I definitely I definitely Red think they would share their IP with the Alfa Tauri anyway. Not allowed to. Yeah, but you know yeah. they all do it. Yeah, I know they do it, but there there are certain components that you're not allowed to. Um, mm. you know, we we saw the whole thing with the um, what are they, the old racing point, um, Mercedes rip rip off. You know, not uh racing. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's what I want to touch on quickly. I thought racing. Uh, Aston Martin looked really good to this week. They, um, they you know, quick, they man. they both looked really comfortable this week, and I think it was somewhat unfortunate with the whole um, Stroll Alonso incident, which I think was Stroll's fault major uh, in the majority. Late move. Um, yeah. But I think Alonso came up even quicker than he expected. But I think for them, this was a really, you know, good race for them. They've been looking a little bit better recently. Um, and, you know, to see them... Cutting it with the uh, Alpines and the Mc- and the uh, McLarens, I thought was you know, for all uh, Aston fans, probably a bit of light at the end of the tunnel, a bit of hope for next year. Um, and sometimes that stroll surprises me with his qualifying efforts, and sometimes he surprises me other other way with his racecraft. But <laughs> I'll keep defending him because he always you know shows me enough that I think yeah he's still got you know he's still young and he's got a little bit to to prove or to show. For me, he's like a Jesse Lingard. Everyone still thinks he's so young, but he's not that young. <laughs> but yeah, fair. Enough. That's true. Um, J Lings. It's, it's it's exciting. I guess that Fernando's going there next year to see what he will get out of the car. Yeah. Be- because I think he'll he'll drag them along, for, like further than where their car is, which will be good. So you think he'll definitely get more of it than than Seb's getting? Yep. Okay. I, I think Seb's doing a great job. Don't get me wrong, but I think Fernando at this stage is just a, a level above. You just think Fernando's better at, at getting it. You know the, the 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 you know the last ounces of of um 
sort of goodness out of a shit car because he's more used to it. 100%. <laughs> he's, he's made so many shitty moves. Yeah. But, um, I, I honestly don't know how he's going to last at that team with Stroll anyway. That's like with... Well, Stroll's been relatively quiet, really, like really, if you think about it, in the last, you know, couple of months, yeah. um, which is probably by design. Um, you know, I just, I was happy to see them not being the laughing stock because now the whole midfield does look very interesting going into next year. Um, Even Haas and like Al- Albon today. Yeah, he, he looked a, good. He had a good race. He looked good until the end. I think his tyres went on him, but he was looking racy. Um, Goatee, he didn't really look that good today, which um, was a bit disappointing in the American race. And, but, you know, also with Williams um, naming Sargent as the, you know, the second driver for next year, as long as he gets the um, appropriate points. I mean, it's great for or Logan Sargent. It's great for um, US F1 fans. It's great. You know, it's less, they've got a, a, um, a driver who, that's a massive job for him though next year. He's going to have to promote three races. Um yeah, it's a massive, you know. Promote either, so. Huh? They, they use Danny Rick as a bloody American promotional tool as well. That's right. So, like, so Logan Sargent and Haas will probably be the two promotional tools that mm. F1 mm-hmm. can pull out. I mean, he's from Florida, so he'll be able to promote the Miami race easily. It'll probably be like a homecoming race for him. Um, but, you know, it's a lot of pressure on him. But, you know, I, I the midfield battle, I think, by the time we get to the end of the year and close up shop, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the off season um, and see what the pecking order looks like when we get back to testing in Valencia um, and see, you know, who can sort of maximize the pas- packages that they finish this year with and, and um, you know, optimize them and bring some new stuff to them that when we, you know, get to the next year, um, we'll see like a new established pecking order, see if it changes or see if it stays the same. But like at the moment it is looking interesting, like every week, at a different track, there's a different pecking order. So just seeing who can capital, capitalize on that. I, I am feeling like Alpine is moving quicker than, say, your McLarens. Yeah, and they're definitely... Martins and, and your Alpha Tauris. Like they just seem kind of in a no-man's land at the moment between the top three and the rest of them. They do, but they uh, you, you want them they you know they want to finish the season with the points to prove that as well I suppose, um, but yeah definitely they've also got they've also got probably the most money out of that midfield team to be pushing for the front and they're the, they're the team that wants to be in the in the front fight doesn't want to be in this midfield fight, um, you know for Renault's sake, um, so I would definitely be like saying they they probably need to be there more than all the other teams. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, hundred percent. They they look most comfortable at most um, the most comfortable at the most variety of tracks. Uh, but like I'm saying, like more for the Astons, Williams, Haas, Alpha Tauris, they're all looking a lot more competitive the closer we get to the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Williams' biggest problem I think is that they just haven't been able to score a race that have like both cars scoring semi big points. Um, they're always getting like one points, two points, one points, two points. Um, mm. You know, where uh, Alpines, McLaren, Mercedes, Tourosos have had quite a few, you know, semi-decent double points finishes, which is what, you know, the second driver at Williams is needed for to push that push that um, second, you know, point scoring car up. But, you know, looking at the race today, I think the midfield battle is looking, it's looking tasty for next year, which is, healthy for the sport very healthy yeah i agree but in terms of sergeant he has to finish within the top six at abu dhabi otherwise he doesn't get the super license points i think he will though oh, he's been doing it all year he's cast shit itself like they're leaving a lot to chance for this guy to finish top six well then if he if he doesn't i think i think michael uh mick schumacher is going to be a shoe in yeah, well, he was looking quite racy at some st- at some points this weekend too, which was yeah. good to see. He was right on Lando's gearbox for a while. And how good was the last lap with um between Magnuson and um and Vettel? I thought that was great. 
Um, and then Magnuson looked like he was going to have a, a mighty dive bomb on the last corner. And I thought, nah, don't do that, mate. That's not the, that's not the place. And he checked up and I was like, thank God, you know, how, how stupid it'll look. Um, but you know, like the midfield battle is looking, you know, there's always these good glimpses of, of, of fight between all the teams, which is, which is what you need, especially Haas, you know, at their home race to score some points and show, you know, somewhat positivity of what's been sort of a very mediocre uh, sort of mid season after a relatively good start. Uh, you know, always want to perform in front of your home fans. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but this weekend we've straight in, straight into another race. We've got Mexico. Yep. Um, I love, I love this event. You know, the Mexico, Coda, Brazil, those three races in a row, they're all, I, I love them all. Uh, Mexico, Day of the Dead, it all, you know, the whole party ties in. Um, Red Bull's always strong at high altitude, so I have a feeling that Max may break the the record for most race wins in a season. Um, if he does that, does he go? Does this go down as possibly the most dominant season in history? I think it will by um by default because of the most wins, but I'd like to see it as a percentage. Um, to see how that translates i mean if 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 as a percentage it's it's still if by the end of the year as a percentage it's still just as high as all the other ones then for sure um yeah true but i think i probably won 13 out of 15 or something right yeah so like yeah so and um yeah so if if as a percentage uh it's it's the um sort of most dominant season of of the year um then i'm i'm I have nothing against giving that sort of title to him because he has been, he's been um, totally dominant this year. It's, it hasn't even been close. And, you know, we, we saw that by the season finishing, you know, four races before the end of the season. Uh, and, you know, he's still got what, three races after this. You know, imagine if he snags another two, three wins um, when we get to like 16 out of 24 or something. 66 percent that's that's insane that could be insane um especially with with the two engine failures at the start of the year that we all forget about um that weren't his fault you know that's insane he was 46 points behind leclerc after australia like that was race three and he was already 46 points behind if if it wasn't for a motor motor GP this year and the ninety five points that Bagnai has caught up this year, he probably could have been the uh, contender for you know best comeback of the year. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen because of our friends on two wheels. Um, before we get to our two wheel friends, any predictions for Mexico? Max, <laughs> as boring as that sounds, you know the hi- history's history's behind him, forms behind him. Um, confidence is behind him. I mean, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if you want me to say something for um, clickbait. What's the, yeah, not not even clickbait. Just for you know, a different opinion. I try and give out out of left field opinions, um, but I just think it's going to be Max. Even like when you say when you say give us our top fives, I try not to always put Max on the top just because it's boring. Um, but in the back of my mind, I'm always like, "Oh, he's my pick." I'm sure that I'm sure the bookies would would also say that. Yesterday was the first time in a long time that I put him as first, just for that reason. I'm just hoping someone else takes the win. But um, I have a couple. I think Williams or Albon are going to be super strong. You reckon? Because of the, because of the track, like there's a lot of straights. There's a lot of high speed. In Mexico, and we've seen Williams be really slippery. You reckon he can bring me an eighth? Yeah, That's all I'm asking for, an eighth. I think he can, mate. And I think Alpine is just going to, again, because of the straights and the way the track is, I think they're just going to look. They, they'll, they'll be giving Mercedes a run for their money this weekend. I expected them to look better this week, though, to be honest. I, didn't, I probably didn't realise how... Um, much of the track is still dominated by the, you know, the, the the twisties and the and the curves, which definitely probably doesn't suit them as much. Um, and that's probably why I was a bit surprised. But yeah, Mexico definitely doesn't have as much of of that, you know, that that mid speed and um, low speed corners. 
that um Coda has. Take the downforce off and go for it. Yeah. But, um, be, they'll be, yeah, they'll be running lean. Yeah. 